Are you tired of watching your child sit on the bench at games? Nobody likes their child sitting on the bench. You want your child to get in a game and have more playing time, of course. But it's more than just about skills, why they're not getting in. It's about confidence. And as a parent, you play a much larger role. We're going to jump into this. In the next few minutes, I want you to keep your eyes on this video because we're going to explain exactly how you get your child off the bench and into the game with more playing time. Let's take a look. So when your child doesn't get in the game, there's a lot of things that happens. One of the key components to this is that your kid really, to be honest with you, <laughs> it, it'll, it'll psychologically mess with them. Like emotionally, psychologically, depending on how young they are too. Some children at certain ages don't really have that. But depending on how young they are, a lot of times psychologically that could mess with your, your child. So it's, it's an emotional impact. It's a struggle. It's definitely an impact on your child's psyche when they're not getting in a game. They're like, oh, all of my friends are playing. So it's, it's, it's most of the time coaches, because I'm a coach, you, you guys know I'm a coach. We're looking for the players that are confident and actually want to play. And a lot of times the children that want to play, they ready to go, but they might not have the skill. Those are ones that are really teachable, right? You want the child that's confident enough to get out there and play and feel like they can know what they're doing, right? Even if they don't have the necessary skill, because a lot of times it's not just about skills. So how can you help your child build that confidence and come off the sidelines? Like as a parent, I want you to ask yourself that question. What can you do? And I'm going to tell you, this is what you can do. We all know that confidence affects performance. If my son, he plays, he likes to play basketball right now. My son likes to play basketball. Um, he's 14 years old. But before he really was able to get that confidence, he didn't really play very well. He would get in a game. And he had the skills because, of course, I put him in some of the best camps in the area. Some of the best. I had some of the best training in the area. And then I'm a coach myself, so I taught him a little, a little bit myself. To make a long story short, I knew he had the skills, but he just didn't always have the confidence. And part of that is because he just just wasn't didn't believe that he could do it so children want to feel like they support and a lot of times when my son was in the game he didn't necessarily have that sideline support you know it, it would be some well he had it from me and his mom but at the same time he didn't sometimes children need support outside of just that game confidence in a child can can stand out and help them stand out in practice right if your child is confident in themselves it could help them stand out in practice. The coach would be like, oh, this, this, this young man, young lady, they ready to go. Let me put you in the game. And it could make them be noticeable. I mean, noticed by coaches quicker and faster, right? When they have the confidence. So it's, it, it's important that as parents, you help your kid or your child feel confident at home. That's very, very important. That's probably the key component. It starts in the home. Um, building them up, building character. And we'll, we'll jump into that because I'm going to give you some tips that you can use to help you build confidence in your child at home because that's the key to get, getting them off the bench and into the game. So a lot of times as parents, especially as men, I know I know me, sometimes I've gotten a little beside myself and was like, man, you man, why you ain't drive to the basket? You know, I'm asking that question and, and telling them, man, or try to tell him something that the coach may not have told him. I may be on a side. Why you didn't drive to the basket? My son plays basketball. So it may be something like, why you didn't drive to the basket and 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 be, get a, get more aggressive? Well, I may tell him after the game is over with, hey, you need to be more aggressive on the court. And that just sometimes didn't compute. So it's it's really about doing this beforehand, right? And it's really about the small victories. It's good if you watch your child's practice and encourage him doing practice, if you can, because some folks, some teams don't allow you to come into the gym or go to the field and, and, and say stuff to your child while they're in practice or, or doing practices. But if you can, you, you, get a, you do the small victories, you encourage the small victories while they're at home, while they're at practice. Hey, man, I saw the way you threw that pass. That was a great pass, man. Keep up that good work. Hey, I saw how aggressive you were on the basketball court today. Hey, I like that. Hey, I saw that move you made. And I thought that was a great move. Now what you're doing is you're, you're encouraging, you're giving him notice that you understand his small victories. That's very, that's very key in reinforcing the child's belief that they can do it. Um, especially, especially if you know that 
they actually probably do have the skills. They just need that encouragement. And, and if other people can do it, like a sibling or, um, you know, another parent, the more people that reinforce that, the better and more confident the child gets. I have to change my reinforcement and positive language instead of asking the question, saying, and acknowledging what he did that I like that he did to reinforce that positive behavior. So I would say, man, that was a great pass. Man, that was a great move. I wouldn't always criticize his mistakes. I would just tell him, hey, that was a great move. I need to see more of that. I need to see more of those moves. Hey, that was a great pass. Hey, that was a great throw. Hey, that was a great hit. Whatever it may be, whatever the sport that your kid is in, take that language and, and turn it into more positive reinforcement. Don't don't always criticize their mistakes. Um, you got to figure out the language that actually works for your child. And it also is your relationship with your child too. It's important depending on the age, especially if they're younger. It's easier to build confidence as they're aging. Your communication skill to your child, that's so important. Guys, that's really important. And that's going to help you transition your child from bench rider to getting more playing time. A lot of times as parents, what we do is we only let our children practice with the coach or with the trainer or wherever they're going to get this training for their sport. That that, that helps, right? Especially if it's every day. But you really want, most practices are anywhere from two to three times a week. You want to, you want to practice with your child regularly. So of course, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but on after you finish the website that I will be offering to you guys at the end of this video, it, it, we have a series of courses for multiple sports that you can, of course, allow your child to take or watch. And then you can take those same videos and implement them to, to sort of add on to the already existing skills that your child already has. Doing things at home is important. It's not just about letting them get trained by the coach, letting them get trained by the trainer or even you know the other children you know some folks say hey if he plays with the best he'll become the best that can be true at the same time he could be he could be discouraged because if he's not operating on the best level that could discourage him so playing the playing with the best of the best doesn't always make you the best you can learn a lot don't get me wrong and sometimes it can there's there's a 50 50 shot at that so i want to definitely as a parent Besides just changing your language, practice in additional additional days with them. Take, even if you have a busy schedule, take at least 30 minutes. 15 minutes is not too just it's short. But for example, I'll use basketball. Depending on where you live, if you have um, an apartment, if you live in an apartment, and depending on the weather, depending on the location, you can always take your, your, your son or daughter to the basketball court outside, or you could take them to the nearest playground, or you can even just go to the nearest place where you can dribble a ball if you're playing basketball. But you want to look at the few videos that's on our website after you're fishing, and you want to try to show your child to say, hey, can you do this, right? This is just, just an example. If it's football, same concept, right? Depending on position they're playing, once you know what position they're going to play, take those videos and, and emphasize that, say, hey, look, this is what you can do. And then again, using your language, your new language that you got, Take that and instead of asking the question, you should have did it this way, you should have did it that way, encourage what they did do right instead of always pointing out what they did wrong. That's the best way to help your child get better. Here's the most important part to this. Here's the most important part. How does your child handle setbacks? Oh man, that's wow. This is that's deep. We 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 got to that's that's a whole nother video, right? <laughs> that's a whole nother video. How does your child handle setbacks? So, so why I said it before I jump into this, right? A lot of, a lot of you guys um, laugh at me because I say that we we, we make our children. I, I know I do. I make my children do affirmations, right? They they have no clue what they're talking about. They don't they don't really know. They don't they don't want, they probably won't understand until they become adults. But I make my son say mainly three things: I am great. I am the best of the best. I am going to, I am always going to be the best, right? Because I want him to believe that he's the best. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he's saying. He, 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 he mumbles it, I'm the best, I'm the best. He, he, sometimes he mumbles it, but 
I do. I try to get him a little bit serious. Hey, be serious about what you're saying. And, and then now what I've started to do is implement more specific affirmations about what I want him to think about. And I'll say, hey, I'm hey, I'm going to I am the best of the best in basketball right now on my team. So that way he's telling himself, hey, I'm I'm one of the best on the team. So that that's a specific affirmation. Now I'm gonna get a little deeper into because that's also um a very important component to building up confidence because having your child say those things, that's energy um being reinforced in their subconscious brain. I'll get into all of that in another video. I'm not gonna talk about it right now, but handling setbacks, I'm gonna come come back to this, is so important because it shows and it teaches resilience. It helps children understand that they're, they're that it's some things will be you will fail at some things you're going to fall but you have to get back up and it's okay to fail to fall and to get back up and keep going and keep going you have to teach resiliency you have to teach understanding setbacks as a parent that can't come from another coach i'm sorry parents who are always expecting their coach to you know when when they lose a game it's just you know like, like it's just it's always something you have to do. And I came across this concept about teaching parents how to build calm um, confidence in their children because I had a terrible season. I coach football, basketball, and a little bit of soccer. I don't do too much soccer, but I do a little bit of soccer. And I've had a losing season for the past two, three years. And I, I was wondering, I could I can't I was I was running running a specific style of offense. I was running single wing, right? A lot of you football guys know what single wing is. And then basketball, I was just running a basic motion offense and teaching basic the three basic defenses, you know, the, the two, three, the one, two, two, and the um, and the three, two. And, you know, I even had my series of plays for both. But for some reason, even the, even though I may not have had the best talent. I found myself losing games consistently. Why? Because I wasn't as a coach teaching confidence. And that's important, not only as a parent, but also as a coach. As a coach, you, it doesn't really matter how well the students are, if especially if they're beginners. If they don't have confidence in themselves, they don't understand setbacks, they won't know. Sometimes they're going to lose. It's also about how do, how do you teach patience? Like some, like, I'm not a psychologist, but... Sometimes I have to ask myself that question. How do I teach patience? Patience. How, as a parent, can I encourage my child to be patient in certain situations? You know, um, how does that help them improve if they don't understand and patient um, and understand patience? You want your child to be patient. They they don't always have the understanding of what patient is or patience is. So you want to be able to say, "Hey, look, just just." sit back and relax and just be patient and teaching that also can slow down their their thought process and help them re, re um, regather their thoughts some children that have adhd and other forms of add um, or behavioral plans or ieps in school that can't necessarily sit down be still with, and, and be patient with things you have to do you have to do additional research to figure out what can help teach patients and slow them down just a little bit so they can understand and give them certain exercises that they can do. You know, you, you don't want to just get to a point where you're um, just saying, hey, be patient, be patient, be patient without giving them physical exercises that they can do that will actually help them learn patience. Here's what I want you to do. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I, I don't really... It doesn't, you know, some some people are going to be smart and say, hey, Coach John, I really like what you're saying. I really want to get your program. You can do that. Just click on the link below after, or go to athleteofficial.com. Not only are, are we a brand of apparel, we have gear specifically designed for athletes, youth athletes and adult athletes. But also there's a coaching program specifically for youth to be able to get, take them from beginner to elite. Again, I'm not trying to sell you this. There are smart people who will buy their parents who say, you know what? I wanted you to teach me, Coach John, how to build confidence in my in my child so that they can be the best of the best and I can add to the already existing coaches' efforts. And then there's going to be some smart people to say, hey, look, I don't want this. I'll do this on my own. I'll go do my own stuff. And that's perfectly okay. I'm perfectly okay with either one. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want every child to be the best. Now, can we get everybody in the NBA or the NFL? or the, um, the professional soccer league, maybe not, but that's my goal. 
to try to get everybody in those leagues. That's my goal. I want you to see your child on the NFL uh, network. I want to see them in the NBA game. So that's my goal, regardless of what they say about these percentages. I'm not trying to get at. I want to see everybody on a professional level. Every child, I want them to be the best of the best at sports. Guys, that's my take. Again, I'll see you guys next week on the next video.